All right, in this video, we're going to look at the vertical shift. And the vertical shift in the graphs of sine and cosine are exactly related to the value of d, which is added here to the end of a sine or a cosine function. So I'm just adding a vertical shift to the end, where either I'm adding some number to move the graph up. Seen here, if I move d up to 2, taken the whole graph and just shifted it up two units. Or if d is negative, I could bring that graph down below the x-axis. Seen here as I move d down to negative three. I shift that graph all the way down. All right, problem seven. We've got negative three sine of 6x plus 2. So if I look at what that graph is going to look like, I know that I want sine, so I'll turn on my graph of sine. a is negative 3, so I'll slide that down to negative 3. Notice that it has a vertical reflection, so that graph has changed its orientation. b is a value of 6, which will scrunch that up quite a bit. And my vertical shift is a value of 2. So I'll slide d up to 2. And I get a graph about like this one. All right, with the addition of the vertical shift, not much changed from when we looked at just the amplitude and the period. Uh, the domain will still be all real numbers. Uh, the amplitude is still the absolute value of a. The absolute value of negative 3 is 3 in this case. Uh, the period has not changed. I still want 2 pi over b. So 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. The x scale remains the same. pi over 3 divided by 4, which is pi over 12. The first change that we're going to see with the inclusion of this vertical shift will be the changes to the minimum and maximum y values, as well as the range. So this vertical shift just the value of d. So it's this plus 2 here at the end. My vertical shift this time is 2. So if I wanted to find that y maximum and y minimum, well, the old way was to just take the amplitude the positive value is the maximum and the negative value is the minimum. But now I'm taking the entire graph and shifting it up or down by whatever the vertical shift is. So I'm going to take the old way and just add the vertical shift to it. So I'm adding two to both the maximum and the minimum numbers to get five and negative one respectively. And that also directly impacts the range because the range is simply the minimum value to the maximum value. Still no phase shift just yet. And the rest should play out much the same. So I'm gonna mark my four tick marks along the X axis. And I'm going to count by my x scale, pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, and 4 pi over 12. The one big change that I'm going to add is to put the vertical shift line on the graph. So this vertical shift shows up at a y value of 2. 
And then I'll place my maximum and minimum Y values on here as well. Five and negative one. And then I'll plot my five key points. I have a graph of negative sign, which means I should start on the middle line. Notice I'm not starting at zero this time, but instead I'm starting at the vertical shift. I'm still along the Y axis. I'm still starting in an X value of zero, but now my Y value is whatever that vertical shift is. And as I move through my other key points, I'm not gonna come back to the X axis every time, but instead I'm gonna come back to this vertical shift line every time because I'm moving all of those points up to. So my first point will be at zero two, and then at pi over 12, negative one, back to two, up to five, and back to two. And connect those dots. And once again, I'll label those key points. And that's our graph. Problem eight, seven cosine of pi over four X minus two. Go ahead and turn cosine on over in our Desmos graph. We'll adjust A to be seven. B will slide back to be pi over four. That's gonna be pretty close to 0 0.75. And then our vertical shift has a value of negative two. So I'll bring the slider down to see that it takes that graph of cosine and moves it down. Now coming to our graph. Our domain is still all real numbers. Our amplitude is seven. Period should be two pi divided by pi over four, which is eight. My X scale should be eight over four, which is two. My vertical shift this time is negative two. So I'm gonna be going down two instead of up two in the previous example, which I get from that minus two at the end of my equation. And then I'll start solving for the minimum and maximum Y values. Once again, I'll start with the amplitude, which was seven, so positive seven for the maximum and negative seven for the minimum. And then I'll add the vertical shift to each of those, which in this case means subtracting two from each. So five for the maximum and negative nine for the minimum. Giving me a range of negative nine to five. All right, we'll mark off four tick marks along the X axis where I will count by my X scale to four, six, eight.
I'll put down a line for my vertical shift at negative two. And then mark off spots for my maximum and my minimum values. This is a hand-drawn graph, so we aren't gonna be super accurate. We're just gonna get the shapes close enough. Uh, but now I wanna plot my five key points. So if I come back up and look at my equation one last time, I have a positive cosine graph. A is positive and it's cosine. So I should start at my maximum value being five. And then as I move through my four remaining key points, I'm gonna bounce between my maximum, my minimum, and always coming back to that orange line that I have drawn in where the vertical shift is, rather than coming back to the x-axis every time. So from my maximum to the middle, to the minimum, back to the middle, and again up to the maximum and connect those dots. And finally label each of those key points. And there's our graph for cosine.